Major Turning there will give a quick, a quick recap and context of what we've covered so far. So again, the reason of this psalm um, um, that was written is unclear. But we see the author of this psalm, and that's King David. And this psalm is constructed in a way that it's like a wisdom or a giving of instruction uh, psalm. The psalm is almost like the book of Proverbs, where wisdom and instructions are given. In the psalm, we'll find the path of the wicked and the path of the righteous, similar to Psalm 1. And also in this psalm, you'll find instruction and wisdom. The overall theme of this psalm is to commend trust in God for everyday living. Even in the face of wickedness and temptation, despite temporary prosperity of the wicked, they will eventually fail. We covered verses 1 and 2, and that was titled the counsel for the godly. Here David imparts instruction and wisdom to do not fret, and most likely in the tone of a command. Do not fret, do not be envious. As in saying that even if we see the wicked prospering, we are not to be envious nor fret. Verse 2 then reminds us that the success and the prospering of the wicked will eventually fail. As it reads there, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. We then come down to verses 3 and 4. And that was titled, Delight Yourself in the Lord. And this is the instruction of what believers are ought to do instead. So rather than fretting, getting jealous or being envious, we are to trust in the Lord to do good. Be obedient, dwell in the land, which echoes the New Testament call to abide in John 15. Mm -hmm. cultivate, cultivate faithfulness, which means feed on his truth. And then in verse 4, it reminds us, delight yourself in the Lord. David instructs here that our joy and rejoicing should be in the things of the Lord. And because we trust in the Lord and being obedient to the Lord, and because we're abiding in the Lord, reading his word, finding joy in the Lord, our desire will be to continue to seek that which pleases the Lord. We then come down to verses 5 and 6. And this was titled, Commit, Trust, and Glorify. We see David again instructs us and gives us another set of wisdom here, which is commit your way to the Lord. The, Lord, the word commit gives us an imagery, an imagery of giving or letting go or rolling away. And this was to be done with decisions that are hard to make, but also when we get worried and anxious about things, and this is commonly in regards to future things or even things that, things that are present. And we're also commanded to commit our daily walk with the Lord. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And also relating closely with committing is trusting, as it reads there, trust also in him, and he will do it. Reminding us that when we commit things unto the Lord, we ought to trust in him. Leave it with the Lord. The instruction here is commit and trust. And in verse 6, we see glorify. It reads that he will bring forth your righteousness as the light. As we continue to be obedient unto the Lord in the face of wickedness and prosperity, there will be something different. You will stand out. You will be that content person in the time of chaos. That praising person, though trials are bombarding you, there will, it will be as bright as the noon light. But again, this is not for us to say, yeah, I got it all together, or to be boastful about it, but direct all boasting, all praises to the Lord. Matthew 5, 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And with that said, we'll go through our verses for this morning. And that's verses 7 and 8. I'll read in English, and then I'll ask our Samoan Bible readers, please, to read Fai'upufitu Malevalu. Psalms 37, verses 7 and 8, in English. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for Him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in His way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. Our Samoan Bible readers, please. Fai upu fitu malevalu. Ia. 
These two verses is almost a summary between verses 1 and 6. And we see within verses 1 and 6 the instruction to do not be envy, do not fret, to commit, trust, and glorify the Lord. And it instructs us in verse 7 and 8 to be still. Again, do not fret and to refrain. If there's a title that I would give to these two verses, it would be rest and refrain. We'll start at verse 7 and then we will finish with verse 8. Verse 7, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourselves over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. David here in verse 7 instructs us as believers to be still or to rest in the Lord. Now we see many things that may have an influence on us as believers. And as the wicked are prospering and as we face troubled times, we either lose hope or we can get influenced by what we see. And a wicked, but a wicked person that's prospering has always got to look out for himself. You know, he's always on the lookout. Or they don't rest until they are satisfied. They will do whatever it needs to be done. And I remember our brother Alter taking us through the book of Proverbs. And he talked about the wicked always watching his back. There's, they're always scheming or plotting something. There's no peace in their heart. It's always, man, am I going to get caught? Uh, what, I, what do I have to do to sabotage someone, to make myself look good? What lies should I tell? Always plotting. And just from that, we could sort of picture the unsettled wicked person, eh, doing all in their power to prosper. Now, I don't know what things wicked people were scheming in David's time. It could be stealing sheep, uh, stealing money, robbing someone, robbing houses, murders to cover up lies, or stealing food. And though we see the wicked prospering, we are instructed to be still, rest in the Lord. And we have seen how the wicked operate in their living, eh? the scheming and the plotting. And now how are we as Bible-believing Bible believing Christians meant to live? And no doubt that we too want some sort of achievement. Eh? No doubt that we want to, like, for example, own a house or live, you know, um, live with a, live, own a house and also live, um, like in the blessings, you know what I mean? Or planning for the future. And on top of that, we have everyday troubles or worries to think about. And if we're not careful, those things can become overwhelming. If those things are out of priority, we start to get overwhelmed. But how are we, as believers, meant to do those things in a godly manner? And verse 7 gives us the answer. In the resting or being still in the Lord. Now, what does that look like? What does resting in the Lord look like? We have many examples of those who have rested in the Lord and faced trials and challenges of the everyday life. We have David, who confined him in the Lord in Psalm 3, when his son Absalom was after him. And, or after him. In verses 3 and 6, God was a shield about him, the lifter of his head, that he prayed to God, and God answered him from his holy hill. David rested in the Lord, that he went to sleep and he woke up again, even with the enemies surrounding David. <clears throat> and we also see in one of the most famous Psalms, Psalm 23, in verse 4, we see again the resting and being still in the Lord, that even though he walks through the shadow of the valley of death, he will fear no evil. So we see that we are not learning how to rest in the Lord from a random person off the street, but learning from someone who has lived it and practiced it. And I'm sure each of us have a story regarding the resting in the Lord. I've heard stories here that, man, I'm full on at work. I got this on and I'm prepping for this, but I'm at peace. I've heard stories of people who are facing hardship, trials and challenges, but during it, continue to praise the Lord. Hey, and this rest that we're talking about is not physical rest. Hey, because those of us who sleep at the machine, we sleep and rest and still wake up and we're tired. So this is not talking about physical rest. This is talking about spiritual rest. Rest from confusion, from the worry of stress, rest from useless human effort. The word resting comes from the Hebrew word domam, 
And that means to be silent or to be still or wait. The main idea, idea is this, that to rest and be at peace, one must dwell in the presence of the Lord and be surrendered to his lordship. Now in the Old Testament, God promised the people of Israel a life of peace in the promised land and rest in his presence. This is found in Exodus 33, 14 and also in Joshua chapter 1, 13 to 15. But this restful and peaceful living depended on the Israelites remaining faithful and obedient to God alone by keeping their covenant with them. Now we all know that never happened because it led to the captivity in Babylon. And after returning from exile, again the promise of resting in the Lord's presence was presented, which was noted in Jeremiah 30 verse 10. But again the people failed to learn that resting in the Lord meant a life of surrender, holy to the Lord and living in righteousness. Isaiah 32, 17. Now in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, it says the good news that those who believe in Jesus Christ can enter his rest. Hebrews 4, 1 to 3. And there is also a future rest in the Lord that we look forward to. And this is an everlasting rest. As believers, we are not given a special potion that makes us immune to life's storms. However, we have the choice on how to react to these trials, these challenges that we are facing in life. Let us believe, let us, let us who believe, those who believe in Christ, let us come before the Lord. Psalm 55 verse 22 reads this. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. And also Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Matthew eleven twenty eight to thirty. This is what it means. Matthew twenty Matthew eleven twenty eight to thirty. Come to me, all who are la all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The resting and being still in the Lord is only found when one abides in the Lord. And it carries on there and says, and wait patiently on the Lord. I believe that these two go hand in hand, the resting in the Lord and waiting patiently on the Lord. And I say this because there is confidence and trust that go along with this. And David notes this because throughout his life, the Lord has helped him. He has the same confidence in the Lord back then and even here in the sun. Now, if we recap on some of the Psalms of David, we can find what he did while he was waiting patiently. Psalm 27 is one of David's prayers unto God for help. And it wonderfully takes, talks about the meaning of waiting on the Lord. And through each line expressed, through each line, David expressed genuine faith and a courageous trust in God, based on his confidence and expectation that the Lord will rescue and save him in his time of trouble. And one of the overarching lessons in Psalm 27 is David trusting in the Lord. And we read it there from verses 1, 1, to, 1 and 2. And this is what it reads. Psalm 27, verses 1 and 2. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Even when evil doers assail me to eat up my flesh and my adversaries and foes, if they foes is it is they who stumble and fall. So even there we see David's trust in the Lord. It involves trust and being confident in the Lord. And there are also other scriptures that we see this beautifully play out. Mm. Our first one is Psalm forty, verse one. Salam of Fasifun, Fai Upu Muamua. I will read in English, then I'll have our Samoan Bible readers please read after. Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. A Samoan Bible readers please. Salamu fasi fulu, fa upu mua mua. Iya. Iya. 
And also in Psalm 62, verse 5, Salamu wano se fulunua, fai upu lima. If I can have our Samoan Bible readers please read first this time, and then I'll have our English Bible readers please read after. Salamu wano se fulunua, fai upu lima. A Samoan Bible readers please, Salamu wano se fulunua, fai upu lima. Iya. Mwanila uwanai, ete bako mwanava ikumba oriantua. Our English Bible readers, please, Psalm 62, verse 5. Iya. My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. The running attribute for a believer to patiently wait on the Lord is trust. As we have read by the scripture references. And we continue on with verse 7, and it reads, Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. A reminder of David, which is similar to that of verse 1 of our psalm, to not fret or be envious of the wicked who prospers in his way. And this is the second time that David reminds us of this instruction. If we do not rejoice in the Lord or commit our ways to the Lord, and abide in the Lord, then there's room for us to free. Hey, there's room for us to grumble or to complain about things, the things we have and the things we don't have, or to envy the things that other people have. And this does us no good. To envy the evil things done by the wicked is to wear ourselves out. It will make us worry. It will make us lose sleep. So it's not worth it. It's not, there is no resting spiritually. And what I love about the Bible and the passages of it is that they are for everyone. Mature Christians to a new Christian to the seasoned Christian and to a born-again believer. The wisdom of God that drips from page to page puts us all as students of Scripture. And may we be reminded this morning to rest in the Lord by trusting in the Lord and having confidence in the Lord. Not to strive with the inner tensions that waste us away. Or to or distract us. Now this portion of scripture is mentioned three other times in our psalm this morning. One is mentioned in verse 1 of our psalm. And the other is in the current verse that we are going through. And the last one is mentioned in verse 8. So it must be important. Hey, as Hebrew literature states that if it's mentioned three or more times in the same passage. Then it's important for us to take note. And in verse 8 David writes the following. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. David instructs in verse 8 to refrain from anger and forsake wrath. The word refrain comes from the Hebrew word rafa, And that means to relax, to let it drop, or to let it go. Hey, no wonder why David gives us the instruction like commit your ways to the Lord, to trust in the Lord. We are to roll our ways unto the Lord. Our anxieties, our anger, everything, we roll it unto the Lord. And there will be times where we will get envious and fret because of the wicked prospering. We will get frustrated when we face the storms of life. And it may be back to back like Job or maybe in pockets. But David reminds us to commit our ways to the Lord. To trust in the Lord. Delight in the Lord. Even when we find ourselves in these situations to roll everything unto the Lord. Let us not forget the wisdom, instruction, and command of David in the psalm. There is nothing good that comes if we are consumed with anger and allow our anger to become our wisdom, our discernment, and also what leads us as well. Because it only leads to sin. We can turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26-27. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26-27. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 to 27. I'll ask our Samoan Bible readers to read from our text in Ephesians and I will read in English. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 to 27. Our Samoan Bible readers please. Iya. Our Samoan Bible readers please. Iya. Ephesians 4, 26 to 27. 
or 20, before 26 or 27 in English, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. And even in the same text, we are encouraged to put away these feelings. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. I'll ask our English Bible readers, please, if you can read from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Then I'll ask our Samoan Bible readers, please, to read uh, from Ephesians 4, verse 31. Our English Bible readers, please. Ia, did all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all this. Our Samoan Bible readers, please. Amen. Let us put these things mentioned away. The malice, the anger, the bitterness. It's not worth it. We have all we need in our Lord Jesus Christ. And I would encourage us that the Lord cares for the righteous. And he will always supply the need for the righteous. Matthew 6, 33, it reads this. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And even when we, the Lord has blessed us with these things, may we find contentment in these things. Hebrews 13, 5. It, Hebrews 13, 5. Thirteen five, this is what it reads. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Again, we're told the same thing in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 15 verse 16. Proverbs 15 verse 16, it says this. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble with it. So may we refrain from sin, be content with what we have, put our trust and confidence in the Lord because he will supply everything that we need. And let us uh, put, again put off everything like malice, anger, let us put that away as Ephesians 4, 31 tells us because it only leads to evil. If there's anything I would like to encourage us all, is this. Number one, trust in the Lord. Number two, commit your way to the Lord. Number three, delight in the Lord. Four, rest spiritually in the Lord by abiding in the Lord. And number five, patiently wait on the Lord with trust, confidence, and expectation. Fight well, brethren. May we continue to apply these instruction and wisdoms taught from the Word of God. I will pray to end this part of the devotion, and then we'll move forward from there. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again for your word. We thank you for your truth as we go through your word, Father. In our daily lives, help us roll things unto you. Help us never forget that you have been good in our life. Lord. Help us call forth testimonies, call forth things that um, we see in your hand moving, Father. And may it encourage us. May it help us stand firm in the face of trials, challenges, and even when we see the wicked prospering, Father. May we find contentment, peace, and you and you alone. We thank you again for this morning and the fellowship of believers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.